My name is Francis Taylor. I was born on what is known as Fly Creek, August the 13th, 1927. All right. Um, and this interview is by Scott Davis, and it's part of the Cane Hill Oral History Project, and we just want to be sure we have your permission to use this interview. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, tell me about your family when you were growing up. About my family? Your family, your yeah. parents. And well, my parents was Tom and Lucy Taylor. My mother's maiden name was King. And I had one brother, older, James, and a sister, younger, Valera. Uh, what was your family business? They were farmers. Tell me more about it. Well, they they were they had a small orchard, and they raised some cattle and and had some sheep. Uh, what were some of your routines? How would you help out around the farm? Well, we we herded in the livestock of the evening after school, and we put out hay feed. For the, for the night in the winter time. But, uh, and we, we sold, at that time there wasn't any uh, market for whole milk. We sold cream and at the Clyde store. <laughs> this was back in the 30s. Um. What were some of your other, what about Sundays? What were your routines on a Sunday like? Well, there's a, a church building on Fly Creek and we went to Sunday school and church every Sunday, religiously. <laughs> um, after church, what would y'all do? Well, usually we, we went home. Sometimes we'd go home with someone else for dinner or they, we'd take someone home with us for dinner. Um, tell me about your earliest memories of Cane Hill. Well, my earliest memories was uh, back in 1933, this is the year I started the school over here at Cane Hill. Mrs. Richardson was the first grade teacher. And, uh, I believe we had first and second grade in in one room at that time. What was it like? Oh, we had that reading and writing and arithmetic, <laughs> and uh, of course it was it was really a learning experience because we weren't used to sitting still. <laughs> uh, tell me about some of your classmates. Oh. Uh, my classmates, uh, well, Howard Colburn was one of them, and Leon Moore. Uh, let's see, some of the locals that were in my class, Reba D. Lapp. Uh, let's see, some of them are gone. It was a boy named Billy Hall. Uh, he was related to, uh, he was the first cousin of Hazel Biggs. And uh, uh, see, it was Alina, Alina Carnes. She was one of the local girls here that I remember was in that class. Um, who were your, some of your teachers? Well, in that, in that, First and second was uh, Armada Richardson, and when the, in the third and fourth it was, uh, I believe it was Pauline Irwin. Um, now where did you live? Tell me about where you lived. Uh, from from Cane Hill, we went uh, south to uh, Clyde and turned. Uh, 
Oh, I, say, I guess, yeah, south, and then turn left at Clyde, about three miles, down on this little stream called Fly Creek. And it, um, what do you remember about the history of Cane Hill from your earliest memories of the community and the, and the businesses here? Well, it, uh, the next next door here was, of course, was the Cane Hill Drugstore. It was run by uh, Johnny Miller, and uh, he he stocked some groceries. And across the street over there was a, uh, a, a grocery store, uh, just a general mercantile. Uh, was run by Shaker Gates, and it also at that time the post office was in that building, and there was adjacent building there. I remember uh, uh, Mr. Williams. I don't know where where they came from here, but they had one boy that went to school named Leslie Williams, uh, and he was a a furnisher. He made furniture. I know uh, my sister played the piano, and my dad had him to build a piano stool. Oh. Um. Do you remember the bank? No, it was an operation, no. What did you do for fun when you were a kid? And what did y'all do for fun around Cane Hill and Clyde? Oh, we we played basketball, baseball, uh, pitched horseshoes, <laughs> and they, they played some volleyball because we we didn't we didn't know much about volleyball. We didn't have coaches that did either. <laughs> Uh, what did the adults do for fun back in the old days? Well, of course, their central place of entertainment was the church. Or, and during school terms, uh, they had activities at, at school put on by the, the children of the school, uh, like three-act plays you know, for junior and senior highs. And, and, and then Halloween, of course, was a, was a big day for the, for the kids. <laughs> it was kind of a carnal affair after school. <laughs> um, do you ever remember the mill being in operation? Yeah. Tell me what you remember about the mill. Well, I could remember the mill. Uh, uh, they uh, still with people that bring their corn to get it ground for their meal. Uh, and at that time, there was a, a covered scales out there. They they'd, uh, could weigh wagons and teams and that sort of thing. It, was, uh, it wasn't a big operation at that time, but they were in operation back in the 30s. Did your family bring stuff to it to be ground? Yeah. They did some. Uh, corn or something, and a grain like that. How often did it operate? What time, of, just in the fall? Or? No, I think it was, uh, uh, my recollection, it was open uh, every day, Monday through Friday, I suppose, maybe Saturday, I don't, I don't remember that part. Okay. Um, what do you know about the history of the college and the building? Have you been involved with helping keep it up? What can you tell me about that? Well, of course, it was originally the, the College of the Ozark. And uh, when they moved to Clarksville with the college, then uh, they turned it over, I get to a public use school, I suppose. And some of the changes that was made in the entryway and the windows and things like that, you could you could tell the difference in the brick. Uh, that's that's about all I remember really about the uh, 
Did y'all, right. when you were a kid going to school there, did you know that it used to be an old college building? Yeah. Okay. Um, tell me about the work that the community did setting up the first festival to try to help raise money for the, to keep it up. Weren't you involved with that? Yes. Um, uh, Armando Richardson, I guess, had the first uh, kind of a re reunion up there, and she she had a, a school for girls up there. Some uh, I don't know a month or something like that during the summer, and they usually entertain some, and uh, we'd have a little parade organized by the community, whatever they uh, wanted to. To do, and they usually had a speaker and some uh, gospel singing, as I remember. And they had a they crowned a, a young lady as as the queen of the festival. That was one of the highlights. Now, when was this? Did they do the queen? Oh uh, goodness! It must have been back in the in the 70s, probably early 70s. And I remember Kathy Colburn was, at one time she was one of the queens. So she was a, a young teenager. At that when Aramena was having her. Uh, yeah, this was during hers. And then after that, uh, when it, the building started to have problems, why? Armenta turned it back to the community, and and we started having uh, the festivals when they uh, made sorghum, lysol, apple butter, and and they had vendors, and and they'd have groups that would sing for entertainment, and they served breakfasts and dinners uh, for as a two-day affair, Saturday and Sunday. What all would you do to help with this over the years? What was your job? Oh, I know the, <laughs> the college grounds and just general cleanup and help get organized. Uh, we'd, uh, the egg, Arkansas Egg, now out close to, to uh, Summers, they usually would donate eggs and and uh, uh, cow main out here would donate eggs for the breakfast, and, and uh, I've gone after those. It's just you know routine things. Someone had to go, like uh, Bonnie Hagley. She was one of the main uh, uh, organizers of the, the food part, and uh, she did the shopping. Her and some of the other ladies in the college. They had volunteer help to run the kitchen, and uh, they had volunteers uh, around on the ground that you know that could tell people a little bit about the history of Cane Hill. Uh, what do you know about all the restoration work that's been going on around the college and the community? You know much about that? As of now. No, I, I haven't been uh, physically able to be around too much. I've gone up by and observed some of it, and it, uh, it's really a blessing because we as a community were trying to uh, fix this building, and we were told by uh, state engineers that the, the auditorium uh, wasn't safe, so we had to close the, the auditorium for the last two or three years. We had the festivals, but uh, that was one of the main things that, that they started in to do up here uh, was to get it, the structure stabilized, and they had to take all the brick out of, of the, uh, I guess it would be the, the west end of it. Right. Uh, what would you like to see them do with the old college building once they're finished with the restoration? Uh, well, it would be nice if 
if they had uh, uh, sometimes it could be open that people they come by occasionally people just for curiosity's sake they'd be driving through and they'd see the building I know I've been more in the, the grounds up there and people stop by and they'd come by and they'd ask questions about it there's a lot of history, but I forgot a lot of it. Well, what other stories about Cane Hill can you think of you might want to share that I haven't asked about? Well, it, uh, they used to have Dr. Uh, Dr. Bean. was a doctor here in Cane Hill back in the 30s. I remember him back up in our house. And up on the uh, up the road up here where he turned up toward the cemetery there on the corner there. Uh, that's a, that's a, a fact before Dr. Bean lived in his time that I, I can remember. And uh, then just across the street there on the other corner there was a, a old doctor by the name of Curry. And he made house calls. He's the one that brought me into this world. <laughs> when you were born at home, he yeah. came out there. Yes. Um, any other stories you can think of? Of course, we had uh, the uh, building there where uh, Smith lived there now, where, where it used to be the, the manse. You know, when I was first started to school, uh, the Reverend Mars was the minister, and he lived in that house. And I think he was originally from around Harrison, and he he moved, and that's when the Reverend Skinner came from Missouri down here, and he had uh, some children, and some were my age, some were older. And uh, he was he was real interesting. He uh, he had hobbies, uh, doing things with uh, with furniture and things like that. I know he would take walnuts, and, and they, after they were dried and hard, and he cut those into varnish, and, and he'd make uh, bracelets and things for the. The young girls up here in school, and he was just a very interesting man. Uh, he he had a lot of knowledge of bees, and I remember one one day they uh, took a period out of our school, and he told us about bees, which I was pretty small, but I remember it. It, it was really interesting at the time. All I remember about them is they could sting. <laughs> Anything else? Well, we had the old uh, cannon factory up here. Tell me what you remember about that. I worked, I worked in there uh, when I was 16, I guess. Uh, they canned, at that time, was tomatoes. And that whole slab there where uh, that building is now was a of the uh, warehouse, and uh, it had the uh, uh, recessed concrete uh, uh, pool there, and that water was hit by coal from a, a steam engine, and then they had these huge iron metal baskets that put those canned sealed tomatoes in there, and they would had a, what we would call a, a wings, but it was just a kind of a rollers with had a hook, it hooked the bale that, and uh, they'd lower it, those in there. And Mr. Clay Pye, he was the man that uh, did the cooking. And it was, it was quite interesting. I used to catch cans out of that capper with a, a, about a four inch wide belt. You'd get a bunch of them out there and you'd wrap that belt around there and you'd grip it and you'd set them over in that basket. 
and it's a very hot job because those tomatoes were coming up the line and, and they were hot enough to seal that uh, top on the cans. It worked, it worked a lot of people. And it was income for, for the farmers around here. Mm -hmm. What besides tomatoes would you can? What size? What else besides well, tomatoes? I think uh, later, I, it was after I was grown. Uh, I'm not, I'm not positive about Mostly that. tomatoes, though. Yeah, that's all I really remember about. And that whole side next to the, the, the screen there was screen wired. And they had tables around there for the ladies to peel, and they had a man that was bring those tomatoes, they run from the outside, you pour them into a, a, a platform and they roll down into these buckets and they would carry them to the ladies and then they'd carry the peelings away and uh, they had a, a container of some kind that they could put on a wagon and haul those away. And, and then in the fall or winter, I never did with some of the local people. Uh, uh, they'd label and, and uh, case those, I guess, to whoever they sold them to. So it was, it was quite a little bit of money for the, the, the local people back then because we didn't have Walmarts and uh, Black Pipe Highway. And I remember at that time the old fountain sit out here right in the middle of 45 and there was running water through that all the time and it had a basin to, to water your horses or whatever. Was that used a lot? Tell me about how they would use it. Well, that was the main object for it. Of course, you could go over there and get a drink out of that gooseneck spout. It's uh, probably two feet high from that where horses, you know, could drink out of this little reservoir. Then they had a a drain in it that, that went into the ditch and across into the uh, stream over there. And after we were trying to do something to, to keep that stuff in our possession, <laughs> we got Danny Irvin alive then and he had the, some heavy wreckers and we got him out here hole that up there and set it where it is now. At the college? Yeah, just to have, to have it still in our control. Because it was pretty unique. It had reflectors in it for cars to see. This little, little reflector.